big old adventures Where the harvest is the hunt And the hunt is all we want Come join Big Heart Adventures Cause there's a world outside the door That we might as well explore So let's go on Big Heart Adventures Where the harvest is the hunt Good harvest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Mike Croston, here for another episode of Big Heart Adventures. Last time we talked a little bit about the hunters. This time I want to talk to you about where I've been. Just getting back from Africa. That's right, the first ever heart hunt and release technique safari in South Africa. Went to over to the Limpopo region of South Africa to do Plains Game and a Cape Buffalo. So I'm going to be telling you about that today. Basically started off wanting to see if harding in Africa was going to be possible. What I did was just kind of picked an area I wanted to, to be in, which was that upper um, northeast region of South Africa. Um, it's kind of a brushier area. Um, not so much open, and all seemed like all the planes game were available there. There, so um, just kind of picked the first guy I saw on the internet with some good reviews. Shot an email off to him, told him what we were planning on doing, and he was very receptive. His name was Heinrich Van Heerden um, from This Is Africa Safaris. Just went and decided to go ahead and book it with him. Ten days. He said he sent me a list of everything we could do, and uh, I was pretty excited about it. So I called my buddy from high school, Mike Korea, and told him what we were gonna do. And he's always he's always up for a good adventure with me. So I knew he'd come along on this one. But uh, the main reason I wanted him there, aside from the fact that he's fun to travel with, was to see if we can get a very novice beginner. Never hunted before. He's 40-some years old. Lives in town, lives in the city, works in the city. Never been exposed to it. I wanted to see if an African safari was too much from the handle, just right with this heart deal. So we got our flights, and with all the COVID restrictions, it was was kind of a hassle. We had to get tested and have that three days before we left. And, And it was kind of a logistic nightmare but it actually worked out uh the flight we thought was going to be terrible a 15 hours long direct flight but it was uh it was quite easy so don't let that scare you off uh, 15 hours wasn't that bad and we flew united which was good and we got there so when we get there uh we had another two and a half hour little puddle jumper flight which uh was interesting it was it was a it was a good flight except for the door kind of came open halfway through the flight where I was sitting um, and had to kind of readjust that but no no worries there we made it and a little more exciting than than normal but uh, we made it and we're met by Heinrich and we went straight to the lodge and it was a beautiful it's a beautiful place there that they've got normally they'll have just one client at a time but since we were just harding and we could be pretty flexible. There was another guy there. And in fact, during our stay, um, another client. So there was two clients with us as we went, which wasn't a big deal. Um, it was fun to meet them. And it didn't take away from anything of ours. And we didn't take any away from their hunt. In fact, we had a good time talking about full harvest and heart hunting and how it fit together. So anyways, we get there. And uh, I don't have CB Brown with me and and don't have a professional camera crew so Mike got the task of filming and not only was he a novice at hunting and had to figure that out he was a novice at filming and had to figure that out but on both accounts well I don't want to spoil it but on both accounts he did very well so we had some issues the first couple days but we ironed them out and we got enough footage for the heart shots and then uh, met a gentleman there at the camp was going to put together the, you know, the big episode 
30 minutes or so. So that'll be, that'll be coming out too. So what we ended up doing was getting, you know, briefing everybody how, how we wanted to do it. And they kind of briefed us, uh, on the hunting style there. Now there it's a little different. It's not tree stands. It's not stalking on your own. You have a professional hunter, which his task is to get you on the game and do it safely. And um, he's there to protect you from leopards, lions, Cape Buffalo, whatever might be wanting to attack you. Because it is the bush and it is wild and they're all, all that game is out there. And the first thing you notice is the amount of game. The, the amount of game was tremendous. And we saw animals all day long, all the time. And they were always, seemed like they were always running because they're wild, very wild. But you've got the PH and then you've got two trackers slash skinners, but we weren't going to need the skinners. So two trackers. And then I had me and Mike bringing up the rear with the camera. If you can envision what it's like, it's winter time there. And it's kind of brushy with some smaller trees and bigger trees. And they've lost their leaves. And the grass, it was a heck of a good grass here. So the grass is tall. And everything is crunchy. Everything is dry and crunchy. And so it's it's a challenge to get five sets of feet to uh, stalk quietly through the bush. And I'd say the first two days, we were probably a little louder than... Heinrich would have liked, but, you know, finally kind of got the hang of it from then on. Uh, we really didn't have much trouble keeping quiet, following direction whenever the trackers would stop, we would stop and, and whatnot. So, but that's a, that's a different way of hunting. I'd never, I'm normally by myself or with one other person and not five guys trying to stalk in on a kudu that uh, they call the gray ghost. And that's a, a good nickname for him because that thing can disappear. So we set out on the first day and right away got into some blue wildebeest. And we ended up about an hour and a half to two hour, two hour stalk on those. We kept kind of busting them out. And what we found throughout our hunt was they were really, really wild. I mean, it didn't take much for them to either win you or hear you. And they were kind of, they'd blow out of there and they were gone. But they were very interesting to hunt. Um, we did get a good heart shot on that stock. We finally did get to stock in, oh, within, say, 40 yards in the brush. And a lot of these heart shots were in the brush. Everything would be would have been the same had we were full harvesting. Nothing was any different. So a lot of the footage is, you know, half the animal, three-quarters of the animal. Um, you see his head and you know, it's a good animal. And then on the heart shot, you just see them where the shot is because they, they just, they weren't out in the open. This was brushy country. This was hard hunting. And when we did get a shot, it's just like, just like regular full harvest hunting. We took the shot we could get because we made some really, really long and good stalks on these animals. And we wanted to get that heart shot and, at the end of the day, we got some good footage. So then, towards the evening, we uh, we ran into a group of Gemsbuck and put a little stock on them. I think we m surprised them more than anything. They didn't really think we saw them, so we kind of snuck around and got a really nice heart shot on a really nice Gemsbuck. They were running with some zebra, and we got good footage of that. Did not get a heart shot at that time on the zebra because we thought, hey, we have plenty of time. We've got 10 days, and there's zebra everywhere. Not going to be a problem. We'll just wait, you know. Don't want to do two hard shots at once. We were trying to get a good stock on those gems buck, and we did, and so that was good enough. Congratulations for everyone, and then we turned around and went back to the lodge for supper that night. Now, at the lodge, you eat pretty much what is harvested there. I mean, we did have some chicken and beef one or two nights, but mainly they like to cook what the clients have harvested. Since we were harding, we were relying on the, the clients that were actually in camp with us. And so they had shot a Cape Buffalo and we, we had some Cape Buffalo that night. A couple nights we had some Cape Buffalo, but we were thankful for them that were full harvesting. So the next day we, we get up, have a good breakfast and we go out and the game again, the game is everywhere. 
um, when you when you're pretty much free reign to do hunt any animal you want. It makes it a little bit easier because you're not going after a specific animal. So if you kind of run across a track or or you see one running through the the brush, you can say, "Well, let's go after that." So in the beginning, it was it was a little easier. You know, the stalks were still long, but it was a little easier finding something to to hunt. As the safari went on and our list kind of grew down, then it became a little tougher because we were looking for a specific animal. But we had good success. We we ran into a warthog and we put a little stock on that. Um, baboons were everywhere, so we decided to heart a baboon. And the funny thing on that one, it was a really good, I mean, it was a far shot and on the heart shot video, everything was good, but it just went click because I had put a blank blank in if you can believe that an empty blank i had put in there and it was just the click of the uh the click of the trigger and the firing pin but you can see where i actually hearted the baboon anyways and then we've got we got into some eland but didn't get a hard shot on th those things were always on the run i mean always on the run but we didn't get a hard shot on those that day and so we decided the Cape Buffalo, we kept kind of bumping into them. So we decided to do a pretty good stock on them, even though the wind mm, it wasn't quite right. But we decided to do it anyways. And what happened was we got in on a giant bull. I mean giant, probably 43. Full curl. Oh, it was unbelievable. Got it within 30, 35 yards of him. Made a, you know, he looked at us, made a great, I made a great hard shot. And all the while, Mike's Mike's working the video camera, and he's doing a good job, and he got that on video. And so he's learning how to he's learning how to hunt, and he's taking video. And we're you know a Cape Buffalo first ever heart hunt and release technique of of Cape Buffalo. We were we were really excited about that, and went back to the lodge and and had a had a great meal and talked about that how. How stalking in on that Cape Buffalo was the highlight of the day. And so then throughout the you know, the rest of the safari, it was conversations about heart and you know, at first, you know, the guides and trackers, they didn't quite they didn't understand and they thought it was funny. And then then they realized this is gonna be a pretty easy week for them. All they had to do was hunt with us and have fun and laugh and, and joke around and watch the sunsets and and you know, we could we got in on some great animals. Uh, about everything that was there, we put stock, stock after stock, clip springer, um, rock irex, things you normally don't really get into if you're kind of concentrating on one animal because you just don't have the time. But we had the time because we weren't spending a lot of time field dressing and loading up and taking to the processor. So we could hunt, get a hard shot, talk about it, relax a little bit, and then go on another hunt. So we tried to do two, two hunts in the morning and and two hunts in the afternoon max. Um, sometimes we'd only get one good stock because it, it was a long stock, or we'd get two in the morning and and the afternoon was really hot, so it didn't work out. The wind was really a problem for most of the hunt. It was swirling, and you'd get in that brush, you know, and you get close, and the wind swirls, and it's over with. They're gone. But anyways, the, you know, the guides and trackers throughout the, the hunt, they kind of came around to it and they loved it. They they just they liked it that they didn't have to, you know, we could just hunt. They loved the hunt, so they loved the fact that we could just hunt. And then the PH, he was a great guy and had a good time with him. And at, in the end, I wanted him to heart, but I didn't know if he was going to or not. Or And we had discussions about it and full harvest and, and how it just it goes hand in hand. But... I really wanted him to heart at the end so he could feel it. Uh, I mean, we talked about maybe it wasn't going to be the same feeling for him as, as a full harvest, you know, when you're sitting behind the scope or behind the sights. But I really believed, because I've done it, that that it is the same, and he was going to feel the same. So we got to where we were we were harding Dinebuck, and then what else did we heart? Oh, we got into uh, um, Nyala. The one day was a great stock. Oh, they kept going kind of away from us, and we just kept going and going and going and going until it finally got a good hard shot. That was probably the longest one. 
the wind was wrong and they kept kind of going away from us. That one probably was a eh, 70 yard heart shot, but big Nile and, and it was worth it. So we had that under our belt and we were really looking for a big kudu the entire time. And that was my, that was my big thing. Um, was wanting to heart a kudu. The Cape Buffalo was awesome. And that, cause I, I really didn't expect to get into the Cape Buffalo, but the kudu, I knew, uh, you know, I flew to Africa and you've got to, to hunt a kudu. You just have to, it's like the, it's like the, the Rocky Mountain elk of Africa. You just got, I mean, it's, there's something about them and there's lots of them and they're, um, they're just a beautiful animal. But the, the most challenging one for me was the sable. And the funny thing, there was sable everywhere. Um, big sable, big sable. But sometimes the hunt just doesn't work out. And, you know, we do a good stock and Mike would be in good position and I'd get so excited. The one I got excited and went moved too fast to put the gun on the sticks and boom, sable blew out of that. I mean, that was a good stock and everything was right and I just messed that up. And then, you know, time after time that there's something would, you know, I'd get a good heart shot on one and Mike would just, he was, could not find it or, so we didn't get any footage on that. And then I'd come back and then I forgot to hit the record button. So I didn't get the hard shot anyways. So it was kind of, that was kind of our white whale deal, that sable. So I decided let's go after the kudu. Let's try to, let's try to get that one. And we'll worry about the sable later. The first couple of days we were seeing kudu and we've decided to go after kudu. We didn't, we couldn't find any. We just couldn't find any. So we went to a different part of the the uh, ranch and found some kudu. They were kind of smaller, but we put some stocks on them. Again, the wind was wrong. Blew them out of there. Just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get the kudu thing. Well, I think it was the morning of the sixth day, fifth day, the morning of the fifth day. It, it smelled right in the morning, you know, had that like it was a little moisture in the air and the grass might be a little tougher and so it won't be as noisy. And I thought, you know, this is our kudu day. And I even mentioned it to, to Heinrich. I th- said, you know, this is the day. And we got into this kudu track and the trackers were really on it. Never did see a kudu, just a really good track. And we, we hunted and we walked and we hunted and we walked and walked and walked. The tracker, he was slowing down a bit, and then finally said, it's right over there. And with, you know, on the other side of this brush was, sure enough, there was three kudu, but so brushy. There was only one window of opportunity. I could kind of see the kudu, and he laid down, and the pH was, we were trying to get maybe 10 yards closer so we could get a little bit better um, footage of him. Mike couldn't quite find him, and so we're, I mean, we were stalking and moving and and holding our breath because it, it, the wind was just swirling and we didn't know what was going to happen but finally kind of moved in this position and all of a sudden this kudu was right there but then there was a zebra right in front they were kind of running with two or three zebra and the zebra ran just like 20 20 yards in front of us just i don't know if he smelled us and blew out of there but it didn't spook the kudu and, and the kudu was just kind of eaten. So zebra kind of blew out of there, and so we decided to move a little bit further to our left, maybe another 10 yards, and we just kept our eye on that kudu, kept the eye on the kudu. And Mike had the kudu in the, in the video, and finally we got the sticks up, and we had one shot at this, but the kudu was kind of facing straight away. I knew he was going to move. It was just a small window, and he just had to move to the right, and I was going to have to shoot him while he was walking a little bit, but he wasn't that far away, so it's not like I had to, would have had to lead him. But he did exactly what we needed him to do, turned, showed his horns, beautiful kudu, and finally got the hard shot after um, a lot of stalks, a lot of busted uh, kudu <laughs> busting us and. uh we finally got the, and everybody was, the trackers and Mike and me and Heinrich, we were just excited about that one because it worked and worked and worked and worked and got the footage. We got, um, you know, the stock was in there. Everything was 
right and we got the footage and the hard shot and we couldn't get wait to get back and see if we had got the footage and if I had got the hard shot and not a hard failure. And when we, we finally saw both the hard shot and the failure were good or hard shot and the, the footage were good, um, we still have kind of celebrated that night. All right, right now let's uh, have a little song from the heart, huh? This one, uh, right before we left, I put together a music video for. It is called Between a Bar Stool and a Pew. And we did it uh, on the bear hunt in uh, Montana this spring. Recorded four songs. And this was one of them. This was uh, the one we did a music video to Between a Bar Stool and a Pew. I hope you enjoy it. We'll come back, talk about the rest of the African safari. Sitting on a bar stool Saturday night Sunday or in a pew Without me by your side While they're both made of wood Nails and blue There's a difference between A bar stool and a pew Been chasing these dreams With whiskey and a beer Drowning the worry Racing the fear That I may fail at Everything I do has got me stuck in between a ball stool and a pew. But girl, you're heaven sent. Why you hanging around? Cause I'm still whiskey bent and hell bound. All the dreams, all those plans, all the living left to do. Got lost in between a ball stool and a pew. Now I know you're praying, cause I ain't around. Asking the good Lord someday I'll be found. And released from this prison that keeps me from you. But until then I'm stuck between a bar stool and a pew But girl, you're heaven sent Why you hanging around? Cause I'm still whiskey bent And hell bound All the dreams, all the plans All the living left to do Got lost in between a ball stool and a pew. There's grace and there's mercy Forgiveness and the blood But it's too late I'm too gone Too deep down in the mud But somehow I've got to change Try and make it up to you For I'm laid out between A bar stool and a pew But girl, you're heaven sent why you hanging around? Cause I'm still whiskey bent And hell bound All the dreams, all those plans All the living left to do Got lost in between A bar stool and a pew All the dreams, all those plans All the living left to do Got lost in between a ball stool and a pew. All right. 
it. I kind of liked that song. It was fun making the music video for it. You can go on YouTube and watch it. But uh, like I say, if you guys got songs out there, or you want uh, want me to play one of yours, just uh, send send them to me. Um, I'd like to I'd like to play some some different songs that aren't mine once in a while. So just shoot them off to me, Heart Team at BigHeartAdventures.com, and I'll try to get them on. Just let me know what you which songs you want, and that uh, I have permission to do so. All right. I thought it was you know it was time for Mike. I, he he stalked in with us on that kudu, and he and needed to move around quite a bit, and he was able to do it. And so he's really becoming that part of a hunter where you know when to stop, when to start, how how to walk and softly, and that and that's a important thing to learn. That's a hard thing to learn. So if with that's underneath your belt, now we can move on to to introducing the gun into it, introducing the uh, camera and, and and the blank and whatever to get him that aspect of it. Um, so on the sixth or sixth day, it was uh, Mike's day to 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 start harding. And what happened was we just kind of went to the range, got him familiar with the gun, let him shoot a little bit. Which got him familiar with you know the noise, the sound, the trigger, the feel of the trigger, how to work to safety, all the safety aspects of it, how to carry the gun, and then we set out that morning, and the first thing we did come across was a giraffe, which they're not easy to hunt because they can see you from a long way away, and not just because their eyes are good, because they have like a built-in tree stand where they can just see everything right so they can see it coming i mean it's so hard to get close to them but we were able to we stalked in there and mike was learning how to carry his gun through the brush and and learned about that and on our way in we ran into some impala and so we decided to stalk those impala first because it was, it was a big impala i mean everybody was looked at each other like what is that thing it was huge. It was a huge impala. But again, just kind of like all week long, we'd get a good stock and just about ready. He's, you know, he's put putting the gun on the sticks and he's getting everything ready and turning the camera on and getting ready for that hard shot. And the wind kind of blew it for us. But that's the way it goes. And, you know, he turned to me and said, I could have took it or leave it while I was running that camera. But after that and the adrenaline of not knowing what's going to happen and whether I'm going to be able to do this and this, this and that. He's like, I'm hooked. He says, I'm hooked. Let's go, let's go hunt something else. And I thought, yeah, yep, he's hooked. So we decided to get back on those giraffe and we were finally got in position. And with the giraffe, you know, Heinrich had to explain where the um, vitals would be. It's different than what a deer would be or whatever. So we explained it to him, and I was filming now, so it was probably not going to be any good, but it turned out all right. But he made the heart shot. I mean, that was his first one, and he made the heart shot, and he was so excited, and he was excited to get back and see if he had done it correctly, which he did, and it was awesome. I mean, it was his first first hunt, first heart shot, and he was ready to go again, ready to do some more. So next day comes, and I just I just wanted to get a sable. About halfway through that morning, we ran into a giant sable. I mean, a giant sable. We had stock. We stalked. He got out. We got out. And we stalked. Stock. Stock. Didn't think it was gonna happen. I I don't know. I can't really remember if that wind or if it was just the uh, the brush we were going through was really noisy. But we ended up taking the lead and leaving the um, trackers behind. I think it was because it was so noisy. We were trying to limit the the amount of um, noise we were going to make as we were going through the brush. But we finally got the stock. We finally got in within like 30 yards of this sable. And I'm filming and I'm, oh, was, I'm like, are you going to get it? And it was pointing right at us. And so Heinrich's explaining where he needs to shoot and just maybe let him let him turn just a little bit and then hold here and 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 then squeeze the trigger and and so we're filming and Mike's on it and I'm like is he gonna do it and boom 
squeezes the trigger and hard shot and I, and he turned around and he says I think it was a good one I felt really good and and so now you got to wait right you got to wait to get back and throw the card in the computer to see if you really did get it but we had stocked in on him and he and he did everything right and he made the hard shot but I didn't hit record well actually I hit record and then I accidentally hit the record button again which shuts it off and I didn't get the footage can you believe it oh what an idiot so he got mike's awesome hard shot which he did get on film and it was a great hard shot and i didn't get a single frame of it nothing but that's the way it goes and i love it i love it the whole time it was just a lot of things didn't work out a lot of things did work out but it didn't matter it was the hunt and at the end of the day Mike got the sable. Unbelievable. So he got a sable, a giraffe, and we put a good stock on an Impala. So we're looking for another um, hard shot for him. And the animals, I mean, they were just, it was getting hot during the afternoon. And the wind was kind of, again, wasn't quite right. And so the animals were really, really kind of spooky. So I decided, you know, we'll just whatever... Whatever comes up next, um, Mike, Mike and Hart. So I, I don't think that evening was uh, we didn't get anything. We put a lot, we cut a couple stocks in on on some animals, but nothing quite panned out. So the next day we went out and then finally got in to some blue wildebeest again. So this time I was able to hit the record button correctly, and Mike was able to make a hard shot, which. He wasn't comfortable that he made a good one on the first shot. And so we did it again. He took another shot at these blue wildebeest. Kind of like if you knew you were you knew you missed on a full harvest and then you checked another shell in and and tried again. That's basically what that was. And so then we went back and looked at it and yeah, both shots were were not good shots at all. But the beautiful thing about that was you know, he knew it, he felt it, and when we looked at it, he knew what he did wrong, and it was kind of a far shot to begin with um, for what we're doing here on the heart deal, and for a beginner, I'd say it was probably a, a farther shot than, than he would probably take on a full harvest situation, but it, we were able to see what he did wrong, and from that point, he was he he knew it. He could feel it. You know, he, he knew he knew the feeling that it wasn't right, and was able to see what happens when you feel it's not right. Where that where that those crosshairs go. So I mean, it was a learning experience, and but it was still a great hunt. So we wanted to get him one more thing. We ended up going to, to the other side of the property again, which is a, a an awesome side. I mean, there's kudu everywhere, but those things were those things were so spooky. There were some giant kudu, but I mean, we'd put some stocks on. We tried, but it just didn't pan out. But luckily, we ran into another set of giraffe. And this one, there was a big bull. Big bull giraffe. Beautiful dark brown color. And I was like, this is the one. This is like, this is the one to film. Get it on film. Beautiful. It's like Africa right here, right? And... So we went on and stalked it and stalked it and saw, kind of saw a gems bucket and halfway through the stalk and we're like, oh, is a gems bucket going to bust us? And then we're stalking through and finally get up to this giraffe and, and Mike's a pro now. So he's on the sticks, he's safety's on, camera's on, and boom, hard shot. Beautiful, good harvest. And that that harvest there was kind of the finale of from start to finish with Mike, you know, he, in my mind, I'd become, become a hunter. He knew what you needed to be, to, what needed to be done as a hunter. And at this point he was quite confident he could get the job done. And so that evening over dinner and, and we're having some drinks by the fire. And I says, would you like to full harvest something tomorrow? And my thought process is we've been eating, um, what these other clients, what our other 
friends at that point were now were providing for us and to me to me it was only right that we provide at least one meal and it didn't have to be something giant big let's let's harvest something and provide one meal and i know the trackers were looking for some meat and they were wanting uh to meet for their families and and you know that's part of their it's part of what they get out of uh working there and so I, I thought it was only right. So I asked him if he wanted to full harvest. And he said to me, he said, that's not something I really want to do. And I thought, fine. I mean, that's, you're not ready to do it, or maybe you never will be ready to do it or never want to do it. But he is a hunter now. And he, he understands, he understands hunting. He understands full harvest and the meat. And he wanted me to full harvest though, because he wanted to taste some different meat and he wanted us, our group to provide for the camp too. So I thought, I thought, you know, that's interesting that he loves the hunt, but has no desire to full harvest right now. And, but still has the ability to hunt with us because of heart. And that, I mean, that is the essence of heart. That's why I developed it It so my buddy who doesn't want a full harvest can actually come hunting and be part of it and be such a part of it that it's no different. It's just he's not, there's not a bullet coming out of his, his gun. So that really, I, that really hit me that evening. And then I knew probably should full harvest for, for meat. So I decided, well, what's, what what can you get the most meat from that, you know, it, it's not going to take away somebody's trophy or, you know, I don't want to shoot a big kudu. I don't want to shoot a big Cape Buffalo. I just shoot something that's got good meat, that's uh, that interesting animal, and that put a, you know, have a good hunt with it. And so I decided to full harvest a, a blue wildebeest because I, I thought they're very pretty. I wouldn't mind having a, a rug and it'll provide a lot of meat and a lot of good meat for, for everyone. And so we went out, and I, I didn't tell Heinrich because I just, I just wanted to see because you know I didn't want him to make the full harvest any more dramatic than what we were doing, um, just to you know prove a point. Which I knew he wasn't going. I mean, he's a great guy, but you know what I mean. I just, I just want everything to be when you have a hypothesis, you want everything to be, you know, a control, controlled situation that's that's similar. So we went out and. And I grabbed the 4570, and he thought I was going to hard it with the 4570. And we got onto these blue wildebeest. And again, they were, I mean, just so flighty. And it was about an hour and a half. Just stalk, stalk. And finally, boom, there they were, broadside, one of them broadside. But it's a little further than I wanted. And I had sighted the gun in um, that morning with Heinrich and just to see it. And it was high, which was weird because anyways, I had sighted it in, but it was way high. And so I dropped it down and now it was right on. And then, so I told Heinrich to shoot just to make sure. And he shot and it was right where I had shot. So I knew it was right on bullseye at uh, 30 yards. And so we're out there and I'm, I'm putting the gun on the, on the sticks and I'm, I'm you know, the calculator's going through my mind. Now, why was that high? What the heck? And I realized that I was shooting heavier grain bullets with less powder when I sighted it in. And now I've got these Buffalo bore magnums with a lighter copper bullet, um, Barnes bullet. And all of a sudden the calculator's going off why it was high to, to begin with. And I was only sighting it at 30 yards. And so maybe... The, the trajectory was not right in my mind, and so I, I'm like, I gotta aim a little higher. This is a long, a longish shot for a 4570. Plus, I think that I shouldn't have dropped the crosshairs down on that scope, and so I aimed a little higher, and luckily I did because on the shot I knew it was a good, good hit, but on the shot it had dropped in, and. Oddly enough, it was a heart shot, and we had our meat for the day. And the trackers were happy, and I was happy to provide for the camp, and, and Mike was excited. He was ready to eat some blue wildebeest, and 
<laughs> they were the they were kind of the toughest thing to hunt, and so I was kind of I was kind of happy that we full harvested that. But at the end of the day, we all looked around, we all talked about it, the shot, the hunt, the stalk, everything that happened. There was nothing different. There was nothing different except we had to take the animal to the processor and get it processed. But at the end of the day, the feeling, the the camaraderie, the hunt, it was all the same as a heart hunt. So if I had hearted it, full harvested it, it's all it was all the same. And I think at that point Heinrich started to to really get it. I mean, I mean, he got it from the beginning. Don't get me wrong. He was, he was so open minded on this thing, but he really got it at that point. And I knew he was going to heart something in the end. And so we had some uh, some sundowners, and the sundowners are, you know, you find a rock, big high point, and you just kind of watch the sunset and have a have a brandy. They drink brandy and coke down there. And so we have one of those and watch the sunset and visit about the day and what maybe tomorrow will bring. And he says, that night he says, I, you know, I want a heart. And I says, well, if you're going to heart, you're going you're gonna to heart a sable. And we're going to get footage and we're going to get the hard shot because <laughs> the sable is, is, was just not working out for us. And he agreed. He said, that'd, that'd be fine. But again, plans that are laid out sometimes don't work out. And so we spent the next full day, I mean, hunting for this sable, hunting. Then we had seen sable the first six, seven days, like every day. And we couldn't find a sable, couldn't find a sable all day long. I mean, this one, I thought we were going to get skunked that day. I, it was it was pretty much, I don't know, probably a half hour before the sun was going to go down. So we decided to go, there's this place on the, on the ranch that had a beautiful rock and you come up on it and you can drive up on it and then watch the sunset as we decided to go there for our sundowner and as we were coming around this cliff to get and drive up on the rock one of the trackers yells sable and boom instantly Heinrich shuts shuts the rig down we're out I hand the the camera to Mike I had the sticks to Heinrich. I said, I'm not touching any part of this hunt because all I can do is screw it up, right? So Heinrich's trying to work work the sticks. And, uh, oh, the funniest thing, he's stepping on rocks and making all sorts of noise. And this sable doesn't know what to think because we're coming around this cliff. And, I mean, we're making all sorts of noise, but it's not like crunching leaves. It's like noise on a rock. So he don't know what to think. And he's still standing there trying to maybe wait and see what the heck it is. But we're all fumbling around. It was a terrible, terrible stock on this thing. But we came around the cliff to where we're going to be right in front of this sable, probably 20 yards. And Heinrich gets the sticks down, throws the throws the gun on it, safety off, camera on, and makes the, the sable's broadside. And he makes a great heart shot on it. And this was a big sable too. I mean, the sable, they were just giant. But anyways... Makes a great hard shot on it. Cheer, we all cheered and finally got the sable. I asked Mike if we got the footage. He's like, "Yeah, you bet I did." And I'm like, thank goodness we we got the sable. And so Heinrich, I you know I take the gun and put it away, and, and Heinrich gets in the in the Land Cruiser and and goes up the the hill. And the Land Cruiser is a manual, and so I, I notice it's kind of it's kind of jerky on the. You know, the clutch is kind of, he's jerky as he's going up. And I didn't know if he was just being cautious on this rock or what what the deal was. But I noticed, you know, that Land Cruiser was kind of hopping and skipping and whoop, whoop. And he gets out. And I says, what, what's going on in there? And I noticed his hand was shaking. And so I got a video of that. And I says, what is going on? He's like, that hunt was as real as you could get. And my foot on the on the clutch was shaking and I couldn't get it right and my hands are shaking. He says, I'm shaking from that deal. And and right then we all knew that that heart was definitely in addition to full harvest. That you can you could it adds something to to a person that's been hunting for a long time. It just adds that excitement back because you know you know you don't have to worry about what happens at the at the end of it. It's just, you're in the moment. You're in the moment and you're just letting the hunt take place. 
You don't have to think about anything else, whether, uh, what am I going to do with it? If, you know, I shoot it and it's half hour, or I really wanted to have a sundowner with these guys. No, it was the hunt and you can finish it, finish the hunt and have that memory. And from, from then on, it was the same for, for Heinrich. He knew it was exactly the same. And I think that point pushed him over the edge. He was, it was all in to begin with on this thing. Cause he just loved it this hard deal but after that it was no turning back and we just had a great time the entire trip there wasn't one i mean there wasn't one thing we'd we'd blow hunts right and we'd miss shots and miss films and we just laughed about it and in the trackers and and heinrich and me and mike we just had a great time the entire time and we enjoyed telling the other clients about what heart was and and the one group was from France, and I don't think they got it. They really didn't take much interest in it, and that's fine. And the, But the other group, they were from Mexico, and, and they really got it. Um, they, they understood it, and were excited for, for us too. So, I mean, the African safari, uh, beyond all expectations, w- fulfilled what we wanted to do with heart, hunt, and release, and w- what I wanted to do with Mike to see if heart was a great way to train people to hunt and then with uh you know a trained and seasoned hunter if if they can enjoy heart and all of it was true all of it came true we 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 hearted everything we could heart within 10 days but even even being able to to just do everything we want there were still there were still animals that we we just couldn't get it was hunting the zebra i think the last two days was Two full days. We, you know, we ended up harding things along those two days that were incidental. But we harded, hard hunted for specifically zebra the last two days. We couldn't get it done. It, we just couldn't get it done. Those things were on the run. I mean, a dead run. When they'd see you, smell you, whatever, we'd find fresh tracks and follow them for two, three hours, and just to have them blow out. 30 yards from us when we were in the thick, thick brush. So we couldn't get that done. Water buck was very tough. First to even find one. Second of all, to put a stock on those things, forget about it. Um, In that dry, dry, crunchy stuff, it just, boy, that was, that was impossible. And so we did not get that done, but we were happy to get what we did. You know, Cape Buffalo, Elan, Kudu, Sable, um, Roan, Baboon, um, Steinbuck, Clipspringer, and the list goes on and on. But we'll be putting those out in, in little heart shot videos. So you can see all those on uh, either on BigHeartAdventures.com or BigHeartAdventures on YouTube. And uh, even on Facebook, I'll put it on there. So all, the, all three of those sites will have those little heart shots. And then hopefully, you know, it's going to take some time to put it all together. But uh, then we'll have the full episode with with all the fun stories and, and all the hunts and put it all together for you. So I think you'll enjoy that. Well, all in all, I think at the end of the day, listen, guys, if, you wanna, if you're like me and wanted to go to Africa to hunt but really had no desire to, to, to kill everything, um, I say this is a perfect way to do it. And Heinrich, I know he's on board. We're going to get him on board on, on what we've got coming up next week. And our next um, podcast is going to be about what we have in store for you landowners, outfitters, and preserve owners, um, outfitters in Africa, outfitters in Canada, outfitters in the United States, landowners anywhere, high fence owners, preserve owners. You know, we've got something really special for you. Um, probably next week, week after, but I talked to Heinrich about that and I think he's on board with the heart hunts thing. So when we get that rolling, um, it's going to be an avenue for you guys that want to go experience Africa. But again, maybe you're on a little, you know, you got a budget, right? That was one of the, the greatest things, you know, it costs a little bit of money to get there, it costs a little bit of money to stay there. And, and then each animal is, you know, a certain amount of money. So on a limited budget, but if you really just are about the hunt, you can do quite a bit and have a really good time. Ten days, 
I think he could do it in seven. I think five is way too way too short. I think seven. Seven's a good spot in ten. If you can swing ten, I mean you're just gonna have a you're just gonna have a great time. But, but there's no pressure either way, seven, ten. I mean, even if you're on five, it can only swing five days. Uh you know, you're gonna you're gonna heart a lot of animals. I mean, you might have to choose the animals you want to heart, but you're gonna be able to have a great experience. And then when you're there, just like me, and you want to taste some uh, wild game, and there's something that's affordable to you, you always have the option to full harvest. And again, if you've got somebody that that doesn't hunt, but you really think that that, you you want to go to Africa with them, whether it be your spouse or your best friend or a child, and you don't know if they really want to full harvest anything this would be a great this would be a great way to to get them exposed to hunting while having a great adventure or a great family family vacation um you know getting there's a little tough but it's well worth it well worth it and as flights get added to Johannesburg, it gets a little bit easier direct flight i mean a direct flight is you're on the plane you sleep and by the time you wake up have breakfast on the plane you're there so it's not hard at all. And when you get there, I'm telling you, these guys take care of you. Anything you want, they get for you. They, they're they there to make sure you have a great time because they love Africa. They love the resource. And they want you to love it so that it continues to um, aid in their conservation efforts, right? As dollars is conservation. I mean, that's just the way it is. That's the world we live in. To, to to have these animals and to have the number of these animals, we have to have hunting, we have to have conservation. There's nowhere else, nobody else is going to pay for that. It costs a lot of money to keep these animals. It's land, you know, it's you know, protection from poachers. It's all that. And so if we can get more people, at a better price point, it's still more dollars. And then you still have the full harvest guys that will pay a little bit more, right? But if we can get more people over there and get them exposed, it's just a win-win for everything. And uh, I'm telling you, it was such a great trip. It should be on everybody's list to do because it is affordable. I think the, the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle is just getting there. Once you're there, and like I say, 10 day would be perfect because once you're there, you might as well do it all. But anyway, so that's coming down in a couple weeks. Hopefully we can get um, Heinrich on board and heart hunts in Africa will become pretty much standard because I'm telling you, we had a great time. I, beyond my expectations, again, can't say enough about the experience. And this is Africa Safaris and PJ Safaris that uh, was there with us too. So it was a great experience, a great adventure, but we're on to the next one. So like I say, in a couple of weeks, I got something I want to talk about to the landowners that uh, is going to help you guys out, help expand heart throughout the world. I think uh, you're going to find it very interesting. And then in a week, leaving on the next adventure, somebody that uh, Heinrich introduced me to, has a great story. He's invited me up to hunt with him. I'm not going to tell you what we're hunting yet. I'm not going to tell you where I'm going. It's going to be pretty exciting if I can get there. Um, you know, with all the COVID, COVID stuff is still, still a hurdle. But if we do it right and kind of stay safe, we'll get there. But leaving in a week for that. So check out the website, bigheartadventures.com. So we've got a brand new website there. It's got all the videos. It's got everything you need to know about heart. It's got our heart revival mounts. We're gonna we're starting to add trophies of people that have hearted. Um, it's just it shows you everything you can be involved in with the uh, hunt and release technique system. We're getting gear. We've got tactic cam. We're a dealer for tactic cam now. We're gonna have tactic cams. We're gonna have some special deals on those. Just just stay with us and follow us. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a process, but there's some exciting things coming around the bend. So just head to that site, check us out, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, Instagram. But until next time, just remember, take care of your neighbor. At the bar 
and Hartha. We ain't here for a long time, just a good time. Momentary footprints in the sand. We ain't here for a long time, just a good time. Just well get out of the stand. Just get on up and get out of the stand.